Hi, I'm Zohara, and this is The Soloist, conversations on music, soul, education, life, and many things in between. Today, I'd like to talk with you about the experience of being an instrumental teacher. teacher. In my case, it's piano, in Corona times. We have been thrown into a completely different reality. All of a sudden, we need to change the way we teach and we need to adjust to a whole set of new rules. And this is really challenging. And among the challenges that all of us facing in these difficult, challenging times, music teachers, and especially piano teachers, face um, even more of this challenge. And I will actually touch it in a minute, why piano teachers. So in general, let's just touch the, a few points which we can see happening in our music teaching. So these new challenging times are giving us a huge learning curve for all of us. The ones who did it before and the ones who never did it. I, for one, have done lots of online uh, conversations and um, teachers and teachings and online gatherings and presentations and lectures. So I'm quite familiar and I feel quite at home with this media. Nevertheless, it's different because before I used to do it as a choice, as an added thing. I used to teach piano in my studio, and this was the added thing. When I chose to reach a bigger audience around the world, I did it online. And because this is new, I still find that I need to adjust and to learn so many new things as I go. Without exaggeration, I think I'm learning about three or four new things every day because the new reality is just demanding it. There's one, there's one choice. I can say, okay, I cannot do it online. I cannot adjust. So I'm just going to go under the bed or under the now, and I'm going to wait until it's over. That's, of course, not an option. I cannot stop doing what I'm doing because I love it. And also, it's a financial thing for many of us, even the, wa- the ones who feel that they're really struggling and they've never done it before. There is this financial demand on them, or all of us. But in a way, in this way, we are all in the same, in the same boat because the new, the new one, the, the newbies and the old bees, we are tackling new challenges of the same sort. And the fact that we are in community and we can support each other is really helpful because we can share with each other what we learn and there's always something new that some of us can teach another person. So I decided to count the point which are losses and maybe measure them against the points which might be, might look as gains. And I'll start with the losses because definitely this is the big thing for all of us. So the significant losses are, one, we lose the touch. We know that, especially as Suzuki teachers, we do not correct by words, but we do it by touch. So if we need to help the hand position, we will guide the hand of the child to the required position. If we want to change the back position, we don't want to see a slouching back, we will lovingly touch at the back of the child so that it's a reminder for the child to sit sit straight or to sit tall. So we do it by touch, not by verbal correction. And also, children learn the best from the senses. So words are just one part of the things. Communication, we know that communication is maybe 20 or I think even less, I can't remember now the number, even less than 20 minutes 
is the verbal communication. All the rest is something that we can do via touch, via smell, um, what we see in our eyes, what we hear in our ears, and so on. So we lost the 3D capacity of learning. Another point is the playing together. We cannot play together because of the lag. And that's a big, big loss. For me, maybe one of the biggest loss. I've got four pianos in my studio, and they are so sad, the pianos, I mean. They just stand like orphans waiting for other people to come and play together. So this is really, really a big loss in my, in my mind. Another thing is we can't play duets. We can't hear the harmonies of two, three, four pianos playing together. Another point is the body language. We can't really read the body language. We know that many times when a student wants to convey something, she or he will not convey it in words or just from the face. They will convey it via sitting in a slouching way or maybe just uh, dropping the shoulders. So we can get so much information from the body language and most of it is not happening when we do an online lesson. One more point is a wide view of the parent and the child. In Suzuki lessons, we've got parents and children in every lesson. At least one parent and one child. Many times we've got other students and parents coming and observing. Now, on the Zoom, uh, the same in Skype, I will refer to Zoom because that's how I teach. On Zoom, we can sometimes see the parent, but sometimes the parent will choose to sit behind the camera or not next to the student. So we are missing to see the dynamics and the relationship of child and student. And that's a loss. Another point is we cannot really move along while we're teaching. It's really important for us musicians to stand, to stretch, to move. Uh, while teaching in person, I will do lots of moving. I will stand up, I'll stretch, I will go to the other side, and uh, the student can still hear me, can still follow, follow me with, with the eyes. In Zoom, it's different. I will still make sure that I stand up and I stretch and I leave the camera and I come back, but it's not as common and as comfortable as doing it in person. One more point is we cannot clap together, clapping rhythm, clapping the beat. And also when a child plays, we cannot count for the child. Another thing which is a huge, huge, big loss is the quality of sound. So Dr. Suzuki said, the tone has got a life of its own. And in Suzuki teaching, the main concentration is on quality of sound. Quality of sound. Listen to the sound. Nothing to do but the sound of a digital communication is many times distorted. And even in good times, it will not convey the quality of sound that you can hear in person. So that's a big loss. Another one is the energy of being together. We just lose it. We can still be together in Zoom and we can still feel each other and be present for each other. It's not the same. And the last thing is it, it is a tiring experience for us teachers and for students as well and for parents as well. I know that at the end of a teaching day, I used to be even more energized than at the beginning of it. It's a bit different now. I'm still really happy to see all my students and to spend time teaching. I'm still energized, but not as energized as I used to be before. And I feel that it takes much more toll. For example, I feel that my voice, you might be able to hear it, I'm losing my voice or sort of losing, or my voice becomes crooked much more easily. I think talking to to the screen 
psychologically takes more of an effort. So the voice becomes more intense. So these are the things that we lost. We lose. We lost while moving online. Surprising or not so surprising, there are also some gains. And I made sure to find them, to make a list of the gains, to help me go through this time. Because all the things which I used to do before, and I miss them, I cannot do now. So I have one choice of concentrating and focusing on the things which I missed, or maybe trying to find things which I gain to help me go through this interim period. So let me count with you the gains of having online lessons. So first of all, we can continue teaching. We don't have to stop. We can continue seeing our students on a weekly, regular base. And they can see us. And the parents can see us. So we can continue. We don't have to stop. That's a huge gain. The next one is we teachers, we students, we parents can continue learning and growing because this is such a new experience. Dr. Suzuki used to come almost every day to the teaching room and say, I have a new idea. I have a new idea. And having new ideas, I believe one of the, one of the things which kept him so young, so energized, so happy and enthusiastic. And we know that enthusiasm is contagious. And yes, I am learning new things every now, every now and then, actually every day. And it's a good game for all of us to remember that we learn and grow through this new experience. One more point is we need to dress up only from the waist upwards. Um, I know that you're not going to give lessons with your Andes, or maybe you are, I don't know. But the thing is, you can feel comfortable from the waist down because if you are a teacher, a w woman teacher that used to come to the lessons on the heels, for instance, then most likely you're not using heels now when you sit at home and your feet are not being shown. So that's just on the humorous, a humorous gain. But it is, it, may, it might make you more comfortable. Another point is, we teachers always said that if we only had one cent on each time we heard a phrase, we would be millionaires. And the phrase is, ah, but I could play it much better at home. I could play it much better at home. So now we're not going to hear it because every student is having a lesson at home. Okay, between you and I, we know that this is not really what children meant when, I said, when they said, I, I could play it much better at home. It's not just the home. It's when I didn't have to play in front of you, when I, I knew that I'm not going to be judged or evaluated. But most students, if not all of them, would not come and say it this way. Would say, but I could play it so much better at home. And I do believe them. I always say to the students, I know, because I also play much better when nobody's here. When I play by myself, I can completely let go of my outer judgment. I will still have some inner judgments, of course, like all of us. But the outer judgment, I feel free to explore the way I want to explore. So at least we, co we won't hear it. I won't, we won't hear anymore, but I could play it much better at home. A very important thing for us piano teachers is uh, that we can see the home settings of a child at home. Now, when students learn another instrument like violin, cello, flute, guitar, they will usually bring their instrument with the foot chart or footstool to the teacher's place. So the teacher can see the setting that they practice. With us piano teachers, it's different. They come to us and play on our piano. And if they do not adjust the piano seat by themselves, we will show them how to do it. We have always a proper footstool for the ones who cannot reach with their feet to the ground, to the floor. So it's, we are always there 
to either guide or to help or to instruct. And we always have good quality pianos, most of us, and we have good quality po- posture because we are there. When we teach with the children, the children at home, we can see the quality of the piano. We can see if the pianos are not tuned and then we can suggest, if possible, if social dis- distancing allows it to tune the pianos. If not, we can just let go and wait until things get better. We can see if the child is sitting in the right height, and if not, we can offer uh, adjustment. We can see if the, pian- if the student has got a footstool if needed. We can also see if the room is lit enough and suggest maybe some adjustment and changes. Uh, we can see the surrounding of the piano, the space. Sometimes we can also see the, uh, the noise or the sounds in the environment at home. Uh, this is not coming in order to eliminate it, uh, this observation. But if a child has got siblings at home that usually do not come with the child to the lessons in person, and we can, so we are aware of how much distraction the child has at home. Now, why is it important? We're not going to tell the parent, just get rid of this sibling or do something. But for us to know where we need to adjust our teaching, where we need to slow down, where we need to ask less, maybe where we need to slow down the process of practice. So there's lots of tiny uh, fine-tuning of uh, suggestion we can bring to the practice when we see the environment at home. This is really helpful. One more gain is that actually we are being invited to visit the home of a student every single week on a regular basis. So we get to see other family members. We get to see pets. Um, it's, yes, it's very special to come to the lessons, to come to the studio and have lessons in the studio once or twice a week. I have some parents who come to the studio and the minutes they come in, they say, they just sit on the couch and they say, ah, oh, what a relief. I can now forget about the world for half an hour, 45 minutes, an hour. So it's very special for me also to host each family, each student and each parent in my studio. But because we need to change it now, it's also comfortable for the parent and for the child to stay at home and to learn there. And we get, I got to see lots of new creatures, lots of new pets. I met birds and lorry kits and um, a mouse and two little dogs that I didn't know um, that existed and a few cats and a hum- hamster. Hamster? I hope I'm saying the right, the right word, but I know how it looks. All of these creatures, which I did not know before, I'm getting to know all the members of the family on four and on two. Another gain is that having lessons online saves travel time and saves the hassle of, tra- of uh, driving. I know that some parents find it much easier now to be flexible with lesson times because they don't need to calculate the traveling time and they don't need to take into account the traffic, the, how the traffic is uh, busy or not busy in certain hours. Um, another thing is that parents don't need to find a babysitter or, somebody, or to bring to the lesson somebody to mind the siblings. And that's quite helpful. One huge thing which I really like seeing is that now grandma and grandpa can come to the lesson even if they live in another place, another location, another state, another country, and they can come and observe whenever they want. And I think this is beautiful. It's beautiful always, and it's especially beautiful now because we know that uh, grandmas and grandpas are being very guarded now. I don't know if you would like to call it guarded or isolated, deprived or whatever, but the fact is that grandma and grandpa are not allowed to see the kids, the grandkids. So what could be more beautiful than coming to the lesson, coming with inverted comma, to the lessons of the grandchild every single week or whenever they can? We had, uh, last term, we had 
end of book recital, a graduation recital of end of book, and the child who graduated and had his recital in Zoom invited so many family members from all over the places, grandma and grandpa and aunties and friends and relatives, and they came from all corners of Australia. I'm trying to think if there was, I think there were a few that came actually from other countries, but I'm not sure. And they all celebrated. Now, even in normal times, like before Corona, or BC, as I call it, in BC times, they could not come because they wouldn't fly just for a recital. But now everybody could participate. That's pretty special. I have mentioned in the previous list, I've mentioned a big loss of not being able to listen to the sound. So the sound quality is a big loss, big loss. But here comes something which goes as an advantage or something which can actually counterbalance, counterbalance this loss. Students now are guided to listen to their own sound and to learn to evaluate it while we teachers guide them how to get the sound that they want. Now, for instance, because many times I cannot really rely on the quality of um, the internet, or even if the internet is good in the moments that it's okay and not distorted, the digital sound will never be like the sound I can hear it with my ears without the digital interference. So what I'm saying to my students is because I cannot really evaluate the sound, but you can do it, I'm going to rely on you. I'm relying on you. So I'd like you to be pleased to tell me what do you think of the end of the phrases when you played? How was the balance between left hand and right hand? How was the dynamics? So I will be very specific with what I'm asking the child to listen to in order to help the child, first of all, hear it, and secondly, to start owning it. So while I'm getting the feedback from the child about the sound that they could hear, and I'm providing the technique and the demonstration on my piano of how to get what they want, this is one of the purposes we all had, we always have had as music teachers. Because at the end of the day, we would like our students to own this ability and to be in charge of the musicality. So that's actually quite a big gain. Another gain is that students now take more ownership of the work. Because most parents, and I would say, I would like to say mostly mums, but not. I don't. I don't think that this is the true. It's just that I see more mums in the lessons than than dads. But I, I so I will stick to mums. But I'm sure it, it it it's right with all the parents. It goes for all the parents. So mums are flooded with responsibilities now. Most mums have got the children at home. They have to help them with the homeschooling. Ah. Uh, they have to provide activities. These are the times that we have everybody at home and the dynamics is so challenging and many times charged. This is our new realities. I would say interim reality because we, we are hoping that it will be over at one, at one time. So if mom's hands are so full, I have no problem with mom going away from the piano and doing some chores. chores. In a way, this is an opportunity for the mom to be a bit, bit free. Uh, when I say free, free to do other things, it's most of the time now in this reality. So I will, I will be very flexible with this one. Like when mom came to the lesson with the child, BC, before Corona, then mom did not have to do anything. This was actually also mom's special time. But when mom is at home, it's really hard for some moms to say, okay, this is my lesson. I'm not going to do anything because the list of things to do is so long now and so big. If I can help, I will do it. 
I could not do it before, but I can do it now. So if the child can do some things without the presence of the mom in the lesson, I will say to the mom, go or sit here in the lesson and fold the washings. Or just anything that the mom can do, of course, that doesn't make noise. I wouldn't ask the mom to vacuum the house while we're having lessons. But things, the little things which might offer huge help and relief for mom while the lesson is, is going. And the good thing of this is the student takes more ownership of the practice, of the work. So I will ask the child to look at the music, to take a pencil, to draw a line in all the sections which needs to be practiced, to um, write in the homework, homework page, an assignment page, assignment book, what to do. And I take the time to wait until the child does it. Because uh, one of the things in way that we know that parents are doing in the lesson in their notebook, they save the child the time of writing. And we need to write because children usually will not remember the thing that they need to do between this lesson and next week's lesson. So the, the mom, the parent, is writing it for the child. When the mom is not doing it, the child needs to do it. When the child needs to write in the homework uh, notebook, then the child needs to be very specific. And I will help. But the ownership is really important. They read what they wrote. And that's another bit of growing up, becoming more mature. And the last thing uh, in this list of gains is that children can do now much more observation. One of the really important things in my teaching and in many Suzuki studios is the observation. So students, a part of their lesson, the actual lesson, is the observation. Children and parents need to come before the lesson or stay after the lesson on a constant base, on a regular base, because children learn the best from one another. From one another. So listening and observations are the most important thing in the learning process. Now, many times it cannot happen because like if a child has got, let's say I've got a student, a book, book seven student, and there is a, another, another student who are learning book eight or post Suzuki repertoire, and the book seven student really wants to listen to the other student, but the lesson day is different. And he will not come specially because parent will be too busy in order to drive the child specially another day of the week in order to observe the lessons. Now, my students get the Zoom link of all the lessons so they can come and observe other lessons also on the same day, but also on other days. And that's a huge advantage. They could not do it before and they might not be able to do it after. So as we look at this list of uh, gains, I'm realizing that some things when we are going to go to normal lessons, some things are not going to be able to continue. But many things the students are going to carry to the world AC after Corona because the ownership, the ability to listen, the ability to focus, and mainly, mainly, knowing that no matter what, what, persistence is there. With love, much can be accomplished. Stay safe and stay well. And before you, we go, I'd like to say, if you like this podcast, please feel free to share it with friends and colleagues. And if you have a moment or two, and you can put some rating in iTunes and a review, I will appreciate it a lot because it will help me, it will help, help us to keep this podcast, especially at these early stages of its life. So many thanks in advance. And again, stay safe, stay well, lots of love, and bye for now.